Good evening. The Lord be with you. Gather yeah, uh, this Lenten evening. Um, I'd like to begin, uh, first of all, saying a word of thank you to those who have uh, been holding Karen and I in prayer uh, this week. And uh, we got home this afternoon. Surgery went very well yesterday. Uh, the doctor was quite confident he was able to get all of the, the remaining cancer cells. So we are thankful to the Lord for that. And uh, we'll go back in a couple weeks for a checkup. In the meantime, uh, Karen is just uh, has a week or so off of school to uh, recover and, and heal up. So uh, thanks to the Lord for his healing. And healing is a theme for our service tonight. Um, we are looking at Leviticus and uh, leprosy and uh, the healing for that and, and also for us and, and the leprosy of our sin and how in the wounds of Jesus, our wounds are healed. Our opening hymn, hymn 421.
turn to page 229 in the order of Vespers. As you are able, please rise. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me.
first scripture reading from the book of Leviticus, chapters 13 and 14, selected verses, uh, the words of our text. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a person has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption or a spot, and it turns into a case of leprous disease on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priests, and the priest shall examine the diseased area on the skin of his body. And if the hair in the diseased area has turned white, and the disease appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a case of leprous disease. When the priest has examined, he shall pronounce him unclean. The leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leprous person for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look. Then, if the case of leprous disease is healed in the leprous person, the priest shall command him to take for him who is to be cleansed two live, clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet yarn and hyssop. And the priest shall command them to kill one of the birds in an earthenware vessel over fresh water. He shall take the live bird with the cedar wood and the scarlet yarn and the hyssop and dip them in the live bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be cleansed of the leprous disease. Then he shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird go into the open field. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And the epistle from the book of Hebrews, verses in chapter 9 and 10. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O oh Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. 
Leave me not, O Lord my God. Grace, mercy, and peace to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy people, Jesus makes us clean. This book of Leviticus is all about holiness, about getting rid of sin. Holy sacrifices, we've seen. Holy priests. And today, holy people. Disease is nothing new. Horrible diseases. Ebola had all the world's attention not long ago. A few years ago, AIDS was what everybody was thinking about, worried about, talking about. Years ago, polio was the fear. Before that, the plague. And once upon a time, the dreaded disease was leprosy. Tonight we look at leprosy. First, the leprosy of the flesh. And second, leprosy of the soul. We start with our text and the leprosy of the flesh. Leprosy was a horrible disease. It's the only way to put it. It's a disease that ate away your flesh. There's kids here. We're not going to talk anything more about how bad leprosy is. You can look it up if you want. But suffice it to say, it was an awful, horrible disease. And even worse, it was contagious. And it was such a bad disease, the last thing you wanted to do was 
to give it to your loved ones, to give it to those who lived with you, who were close to you. And so you had to move away. You were banned from your family, from, from the whole community. You'd go to a leper colony, and hopefully your family would still remember you and once in a while bring you some food. And they would just set the food there. You'd have some schedule worked out with them, and they would leave, and then you would go and grab it. But you'd never see them, touch them, be with them, talk to them. A horrible disease. In fact, depending on the kind of leprosy, you'd have to cry out, unclean, unclean, stay away. In case anybody who was clean came near you. That was especially true if, if the leprosy was on your head. You'd have to tear your clothes, as our text said, keep your hair disheveled, cover your mouth, yell unclean. A horrible disease. And in our text, the words that tell us what happens when you got that disease. If it happened, you would go to the priest. And the priest would examine you. And if you read, we just have a few of the verses, but if you read the whole thing, there was all kinds of skin conditions. And, and there wasn't exactly a word just for leprosy like we have it, but, but that word covered a whole bunch of skin conditions. And so the priest would examine you. Is it a rash? Is it just something temporary? Is it contagious? Is it not? But the priest knew to look for what leprosy was. The color that it turned your skin, the, the, the hairs on your arm or wherever would, would die, and, and all the particular marks he knew how to examine. And if that person had contagious leprosy, he was pronounced unclean. It was a most horrible kind of sentence because it meant the person was removed from the community probably for the rest of their life, and the rest of their life could indeed be quite long, but progressively worse. There was no cure. No cure short of prayer and the miracle of God. But of course, miracles happen. God hears and answers prayer. We know that. They knew that. God knows that. And so in his word, he gives also the word about cleansing. For those times when the miracle is done, when healing is given, and the leprosy is removed. And so if one was healed, again, they would go to the priest and show themselves. And if the priest said, yes, you are clean of leprosy, you take a cedar stick and some red yarn and tie to that cedar stick some hyssop, uh, twigs, and then you would take two birds and sacrifice one and, and mix the blood of the bird with some water, and take the other bird and dip it into that water and blood, and take the hyssop and put that into it, and sprinkle the person seven times with that water and blood. And then the bird would be set free, symbolic of what had happened to this person and his leprosy. God gave these words in the Bible to keep his people safe. And also these words of healing that they might celebrate the miracle and the healing of God. Fortunately, with antibiotics and all of that, leprosy is far less a concern for us today. But my friends, there is something else that has taken its place, and it's not Ebola or any of those other diseases we mentioned. It is still leprosy, but it's leprosy not of the body. It is leprosy of the soul. You see, all of this in Leviticus, it is pointing us to Jesus. It's pointing us to the leprosy of sin and to the miracle of healing that is ours. For you see, we have a leprosy far worse than that of the Old Testament. We have the leprosy of sin. 
sin which eats away not at our fingers and toes but at our soul it rots us it corrupts us it would kill us and it's contagious we tempt one another to sin we lead one another into sin spend time around a sinner and what happens their sin likely rubs off on us we too do that same sin it is contagious it is deadly and there is no cure no cure on our own short of a miracle and that my friends is why we're here because there is a miracle it's the miracle of the cross the miracle of Christ coming and living among us who were leprous people the last place he should want to come or want to live and yet deliberately he comes and lives among us to let our leprosy rub off on him that he might take our sins into his body and in so doing make us clean that is the miracle that's what Lent is all about That's what Good Friday is all about it's what Easter is all about the leprosy of our sin removed we are cleansed we are healed The Bible has different accounts of where Jesus would heal a leper. And very often he would touch them. He would touch the person and their leprosy. Why? Because he was taking away not only their leprosy, but also the leprosy of their sin. And so he touched them and took that on himself as he cleansed that person. One time he cleanses 10 lepers. All at the same time. You know the story. Go show yourselves to the priest. They go running off. But soon one comes back. Jesus says, what? One Samaritan? Where are the other nine? Why only this one come to give thanks? Perhaps it is this. The other nine knew they could go to the priest. They knew the priest would pronounce them clean. But the Samaritan, he couldn't go to the priest. He wasn't a Jew. And so who does he go to? His priest, Jesus. The Samaritan returns to Jesus that Jesus might pronounce him clean. And so he does. Jesus looks, my friends, at you deep into your heart and soul the darkness the blackness the sin he touches you and he takes that leprosy he takes that darkness he takes that sin and he pronounces you my friends clean forgiven so amazing what a God. You've contracted the worst disease ever. But miracle of miracles, you have been healed. You have been cleansed by the master healer, by Jesus, who pronounces your soul clean and holy. And that, my friends, is the way that it is on this third Wednesday in Lent in the year of our Lord, 2015. In Jesus' name, amen. In response, we join in hymn 846.
this time we continue our passion reading for this season of Lent. It is found on a white insert in your bulletin. Our passion continues on Monday, Thursday, where Jesus says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it. And likewise, an asset. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For that that is written about me as its fulfillment. And they said. And he said to them. It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple and elders, who had come out against him. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. So far, the passion of our Lord. We bring now to the Lord our tithes and offerings. Also ask that you would sign the friendship register in the red folder in your pew.
we rise for prayer. We begin our prayers with the singing of the Kyrie, following that, the singing of the Lord's Prayer.
to our guests tonight. So good to have you with us. Thanks to those who have served this evening. And uh, the next two weeks, uh, there's this particular group serving our soup suppers. So if you're interested in, in uh, helping with that, uh, there's sign-up sheets on the counter. Uh, we need people to bring food, uh, soups, or bars, or sandwiches. Uh, your help would be appreciated. Um, other announcements are listed there in the bulletin. The Lord be with you and uh, keep you in his care these holy days of Lent. 